Good afternoon, Easton, and welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi at Temple B'nai Israel, and we are coming to you from the newly designed studios of MCTV in the basement of the Avalon Theater. Uh, some of you may recognize, well, you may not be able to see this, but we're sitting behind a new table. <laughs> and we are sitting behind a new table with Ruth Sullivan. Hi, Ruth, glad you're here. Ruth is the president of the Talbot Community Connections, and uh, Talbot Community Connections is holding their second annual Senior Summit. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be held on, on it's a Summit on Aging, um, subtitled Growing Older and Loving It, on June 8th, which is a Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Talbot Community Center, which is on, as many of you know, Route 50. Yes. Thank you for being here. Let's talk about Thank this uh, aging, getting older and loving it concept. <laughs> How's that working? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's looking at it from a positive yes, um, absolutely. Uh, viewpoint. And, and uh, our, our speaker this has already told us this joke, uh, our keynote speaker has told us this joke of Johnny Carson's that being old is being 10 years old older than you are right now so yes. it's if you are 60 then 70 yes. is old but we've all decided that once we hit 70 yes. then we're going up the 10 years yes. and it's going to be 80 years old as, you're as old as you say that's you, as you are speaking, and as you feel i'm thinking about a whole a whole slate filled with the old jokes about old people guy collapses mm -hmm. in the middle of the street somebody comes and runs over and puts uh, the, the pillow under his head and he says are you comfortable and he says for now I'm okay <laughs> it's all right never mind I'm sorry we, we can cut that later anyway tell us <laughs> tell us who is sponsoring the senior summit and about um, about your group well the Talbot Community Connections is sponsoring it with the help of an awful lot of community um, different community groups yeah. and different local businesses, but particularly the top county government is giving us for the second year an endorsement to come out and provide this summit um, to make people aware of, of aging and how to do it gracefully yeah. and um, not be the one laying on the ground, right, right. Um, but to actually have information that they need to live life even better than they already are. And, Interesting. Yeah. And what, what, there's, there's an, I'm sure there's an agenda for the day. Mm -hmm. What are the topics? Well, the uh, topics vary based upon what we feel the um, aging community would be um, like to hear okay. and to better enrich their lives. So actually a group from the Department of Social Services joined with the Chauba Community Connections um, and we're the not-for-profit arm of the Department of Social uh, Services right. for the county to actually be able to raise funds to meet the unmet needs of vulnerable adults and children. It also sponsors the Children's Advocacy Center locally. At for the, the hospital. Yes, for the, the five-county yep. area. Yep. And um, it doesn't take a lot of money, but it takes more than what you know the state Budget. provides. Sure, and sure. People don't always fall into a little niche, and of course. this money allows the Department of Social Services not to turn away some of the people that would, you know, can't get a grant or sure. be in a, a, a block grant that would meet their needs because emergencies don't always fall into the right category. Oh, abs absolutely. So and and how has that. that process, how has the fundraising the process been going I, successfully, I would imagine. Yes. Oh yes, yeah, we've grown over the years. Uh, the Talbot Community Connections was actually conceived in 2002, and um, we've been very active over those years to raise funds for the Department of Social Services and the Children's Advocacy Center, and it's grown from being able to give a few thousand dollars a year to as much as twenty six to thirty thousand dollars really? a year. Really? That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yes, and all of it is driven through this community with the wonderful donors that we yeah. have and an annual letter writing um, sure. uh, appeal that we do. And then this function came along. We've always had a commitment to education of the um, county uh, 
to live better lives and um, to make them aware of the Department of Social Services and make the community aware of the, the actual wonderful work that's done at the Children's Advocacy Center here in Easton. And um, we've been able to really find the right market because we have such a large population in yes. Tropicana County yeah, of sure. us aging individuals. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're a group that, as we age that seem to want to be more educated and to be aware and to take some accountability for the type of lives that we're going to, I, I, to live. That's, that's, that's really wonderful and it's important mm -hmm. and it's necessary. Mm -hmm. I, I am not surprised that the community has been generous because yeah. that's the nature of this community. It's, I say all the time, they hear me all the time on this show say, how fortunate we are to live in the community in which we live. Yeah. Yeah. And so the Tauba County um, government, our Tauba County Council, actually approved last year, before the first one occurred, that we could have the second annual oh, how um, nice. summit. And um, last year we had to stop registration several weeks ahead because we were up to what we thought we could handle. There were over 220 some people with 40 some vendors. Wow. And um, had great accolades and made the front page yeah, of the starting Yeah, I, I know, I remember. The graying of the shore. Absolutely. So, but that also speaks yeah. to, uh, that kind of response speaks to the fact that, that our, citizens, our citizenry recognizes mm -hmm. how important this is and that it, that it ultimately affects them individually and, and intimately, yes. and personally. So, so when we ask what we're going to be talking about, um, we actually had people coming up and volunteering to speak and, oh, and requesting cool. yeah. opportunities before they left the first event. Wonderful. But, so we've, we've had our pick and choose and we have anywhere from tips on safe driving and for the children of very, el very elderly uh, parents who they have concerns about it, it talks to them about safe driving, whether it's safe for mom or dad to be driving, and what process you can go through to verify it yep. or to reconcile it. <laughs> I, I can tell you from, from my perspective as the rabbi dealing with families, that is oh. a, a, an issue that comes up all the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the ancillary circumstances, you know, the, the emotions and the feelings and um, the arguments, you know, mom, dad, you're, I, you can't yeah. do this anymore. You're putting and it's yourself. It's painful in, for both parties. Oh, to it's, do. it's 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 it and is. it's from watching it as as you know from the, the clergy perspective dealing with family dynamics. This is yeah. wonderful. I mean, this is an important topic. Yeah. So we're encouraging even for that one topic. Just the elderly come out, and those that, that aren't even thinking they're elderly yeah. should come. Yeah, yeah. Because we're all growing older by the minute. Oh, no um, kidding. But we want to do it gracefully, yep. and we want to do it in an informed manner. And so we recommend they come out. We recommend that uh, care providers. We also last year and this year also have uh, offered CEUs for social workers, and oh, we had I believe good. over seventy uh, social workers last year. One from at least every county in the state of Maryland drove to to this wow. conference because they felt the need for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, families can go as well, correct? Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Um, we're we're um, ten dollars for seniors, so we're actually yeah. having your food subsidized. We're going to feed you all day. There you go. <laughs> Continental breakfast there and then a go. lunch uh, catered by Sprouts. Oh, nice. Bucks lunch. Yeah, yeah, so very we're eating nice. healthy, can you imagine? There you go. And so 45 for those adult children that don't reach the elderly age. Gotcha. You know, many of us will confess our age when there's a discount involved. <laughs> and there's a significant discount of $10 for adults, um, $10 for seniors. Seniors. But adults that aren't seniors have to pay 45 bucks. They're, that's fine. And if you're a social worker, to get the CEUs, you're paying 85 Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, so we're that's... making sure that we address the needs of the community and have taken flyers to all the assisted living um, uh, Good. homes. And, Wonderful. And um, the centers that are around and, the, you know, the Y and all the Excellent. different places. Excellent. Um, Maybe you should also tell Tackle about this, the Talbot oh, Association yes. of Clergy and Laity. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot Sue oh, Brownie, who's the president, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll shoot her a note. Um, well, we also put the other gathering place, which is the Amish market. We have flyers up at oh, the good. Amish market. Oh, good, good. That's, that's, <laughs> that's good, too. You know, I, I, I did a little research, and, and I see some of the topics. Um, 
financial planning, mm -hmm. which is hugely important, um, mm -hmm. um, obviously medical stuff. But the one that I that I that resonated with me was uh, advanced directives. Yes, yes, and we have uh, two individuals who are experts coming from Shore Regional Health oh, to good. address that. And good. There will be periods of at least fifty minutes of lecture, but the you know there is plenty of an opportunity to ask questions. Sure. Sure. And most of the people will be there. The speakers will probably stay for the day, and you know you can talk to people and get some good insight on how to handle the most. And you will, yes, and, and you know to and, do and those forms and all the topics are are pertinent and important. Mm -hmm. And again, from my perspective, from the clergy's chair, uh, I, I I go through this stuff. It's not an easy topic to deal with. It's not yeah. pleasant. But does it make life simpler when oh, yes. when mom and dad have you know there's no argument with the kids and that's not always but they, at least they try to anyway. Uh, we we also have Patty Campen from um, our Register of Wills. Here oh, good. Speaking and she actually came and was a vendor last year and um, we spoke to her and she immediately said I would love to be a speaker. And cool. So that's so important, you know, yeah. to prepare your life and. Yeah, yeah. No matter how old you are, you yeah. don't know. So of you should prepare. Of course. And, and, and she's going to go through that. the process. Yeah. So adult children can come yeah. and um, get information for their parents and for their own estates. How, how do people register? Oh, the registration is really easy. Good. All you have to do, and you must pre-register because we're feeding you. We've got to know how many right. people are going to be right. at the table. Right. So um, we're anticipating we could have 350 people after last year having 220. Wow. So you must pre-register at least a week before the event. Um, and you can go to our website, www.talbacommunityconnections.org. Um, and that'll well, take you right to a site where you can choose to pay online with a credit card. Good. Or um, you can send it. You can right. send money by check right. to the Department of Social good. Services. And we'll, we'll, we'll put it that will in come here. through our post office box, Talbot um, Community Connections, PO good. Box two six one five, East in Maryland. Excellent. Um, this is very exciting. I, I do remember that last year's was very successful. Oh, yes. And building on that, I'm sure this will even be more successful. Let's just tell the date again and where and... It, it's June 8th um, at the Talbot um, Community Center. On Route 50. On Route 50, opposite the Hogneck Arena. Yep. We're going to fill the whole building. We'll have... Uh, We'll have the vendors in the curling rink, and we'll try to fill that whole skating rink with um, speakers. But we we have breakout sessions that will be on nutrition and, and all sorts of topics. Uh, you know, physical exercise, yoga, and it's from eight thirty to four thirty, a full day. You but you could come and go if you feel like you couldn't do the whole mm -hmm. day. There's nothing to stop you. Just pre-register, get your food reserved. <laughs> Have your name tag available. You can slip in at, at registration any time. Good. And come spend the day with us, but you can't get in unless you pre-register. Very good. And of course, if you feed them, they will come. I'm hoping they yes. will come. And the more the merrier. The yeah. the funds raised will go right back into Chaba County yep. to help the vulnerable adults and children. Wonderful. We've been talking with Ruth Sullivan, and as I said, Ruth is the president of Talbot Community Connections. And they're holding the second annual Senior, Senior Summit on Aging uh, Dash, Growing Older and Loving It. Yes. Ruth, thank you. I look oh, forward. Thank uh, you. No, my pleasure. I look forward to having you back. You'll come and give mm -hmm. us a, a wrap-up and you'll let us know how okay. it went. And, uh, oh, I'd be um, pleased to. Uh, May I, we say we had to turn people away. I hope you know what I hope so. I, you know, and or else make room. That, either way, but uh, I think it's going to be successful. Certainly based on on what happened last year. And again, thank you for being at the Rabbi's Roundtable. Oh. You will come back, and we will be right back, Easton. We are MCTV, Midshore Community Television. We want your help in making our station more robust so that we can better serve the residents of Talbot County. So, how can you help? 
If you are already making video content, submit that content for broadcast to the station. It's free! Are you involved in events, shows, or lectures that would be of interest to the community? We can work with you to figure out the best way to capture those events for airing on MCTV. Be it training, equipment rental, or hiring our production staff to film at a reasonable rate. Do you want to produce your own show? Let us help you get started. Come be a part of this valuable community resource. Email the station at nick at avalonfoundation.org or visit us in the basement of the historic Avalon Theater at 40 East Dover Street in downtown Easton. And we are back. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman. You are seated at the Rabbi's Roundtable, coming to you from the studios of MCTV in the basement of the Avalon Theater. And with me now, uh, somebody who is not a stranger to the Avalon nor to the Rabbi's Roundtable, <laughs> my friend for many years, the artistic director of the Avalon, uh, Susie Moore. Susie, always a pleasure to have you at the Rabbi's Roundtable. I love coming, Rabbi. Thank I, you. I'm glad, glad to have you. And also, Alan Gerard. Alan is the Eastern Shore Director of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Alan, uh, welcome to you. And Thank we are you. going to talk about the Clean Water Concert Series, which is going to be very cool. I know a little bit about this. We're going to talk more. Take it away, Miss Susie. All right. Well, we're excited. Um, it is a rainy day right now, so I, I'm looking forward to some nice warm sunny days out on the street. I'll do my best. Uh, yep, all right, <laughs> perfect. But the Avalon Foundation, this is our fifth year partnering um, with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. We're are always so grateful for the partnership um, and the ability to put our strengths together and to present these free community events um, to, to, the, um, to the community in the efforts to raise awareness on clean water. Well, you know, the Chesapeake Bay is getting more healthy, and the reason for it is because citizens and business and government are all coming together to get the job done. We are seeing record numbers of oyster harvests, uh, adult crab numbers are up, the low oxygen dead zones in the bay are down so fish can breathe, and you know, we're seeing improvements. And this series is about a way for the community to come together and celebrate that progress and uh, make sure that we do what's needed to finish the job. Can Good job. You, can you tell us, tell us a little about the series, and then I want to come back and ask a couple of yeah, questions sure, about sure. the science of this, because this, yeah. this, this is so important to me personally and uh, mm -hmm. as a resident of the area. So uh, the I'm going to go with the, the logistics and the details. That's fine. That? That's fine. So we are going to kick off the Clean Water Concert Series on June 3rd. All of the concerts will take place on Harrison Street between Dover and Goldsboro, kind of on the side of the Tidewater and patio. Yep. Um, we close them down. People bring lawn chairs. They bring little picnic dinners, their kids, their grandmothers, their families, mm -hmm. um, and their dancing shoes for some of the shows for sure. Um, and it's always a great night. The first one on June 3rd will be Cantare. Um, it's going to be songs and music from South and Central America. So we're really inviting the um, Latino community in Easton to come out Wonderful. and join us. Um, we're working on having some food vendors there, so you'll be able to come and get some dinner. Um, and Nice Farms Creamery will be there, their cow to cup ice cream, which is so delicious. Um, so we're really excited about that first one, and I'll let you touch a little bit more on that. The next one will be June 21st. No, June 24th. June 24th. And that is the ever-popular United States Navy band Sea Chanters. Oh, they're great. And they're great. They have a band, but the my favorite image is they're always in their whites, and then it's like 15 to 20 microphones, just a little field of microphones. So they'll do, they do old sea shanties to to popular songs like of today. So it's always a really... Were they really fun one. Year? Yep, they've been they here. Were, yeah, yep. yeah, they were great. I love they them. They draw great big crowds. Yes. I, I'm forecasting the biggest attendance ever this year. Cool. If there's bad weather, of course, it'll be in the theater. Um, and then we're going to wrap up the, the concert series on July 8th with um, everybody's favorite XPDs. And that is like the biggest dance of the summer. And they are Motown and R&B, and they bring yeah. Lumpy, and it's it's off the hook fun. So cool. And it's all for a great cause. Um, like I said, the Avalon Foundation and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation partner together um, to present these, and it's always, they're my favorite events. It always rocks. Them. It always rocks. Yep. It's wonderful. These are all Saturday nights coming up in yep. summer. I mean, this is the fifth year we've been doing it. We've had the, the Sea Shanters and the XPDs over the years. 
um, the crowds really love it. You yeah. know, coming out and you know, with each of these comfort, uh, concerts, what we've been able to do is to invite members of the environmental community, uh, Mid Shore Riverkeeper Conservancy, uh, Wacomico Environmental Trust, different partners Excellent. from up and down the shore that are educating kids about clean water, that are connecting with people about what to do to filter pollution from your yard, etc. Um, they'll be there with all their information, uh, ready to educate children and families about how to be good stewards of our environment. Uh, and those pre-activities, they start at six. So you get to come on out early, pick your spot on the street. And last year there were, they had crafts for kids, they had the things where you can make the little jellyfish, but it's, it's so educational and it's so fun. You know, all of it hand in hand together, which makes it a great event. The whole notion of the community on the Eastern Shore coming together for not only a fun night, but a fun night that focuses on, I think, personally, absolutely critical issues of conservation mm -hmm. and ecolo ecological stewardship. And thank you for doing this. Uh, you may know this. I, the, the last lecture series that I did at, at B'nai Israel at the temple uh, was uh, ecological stewardship and the biblical imperative for conservation and responsibility based on, uh, had four speakers, I didn't speak, but had four speakers dealing, starting with the pro proposition that in the book of Genesis, not to get overly religious, but the book of Genesis re requires us to be sensitive to and aware of the environment. And so this is, this is majorly well, cool. And it takes a whole community of people, you know, to really do the work that's needed. I mean, people, you know, to go out fishing on the weekends or maybe they get out on the sailboat and there's often not a lot of thought put into how we as a community of people steward our landscape to help protect the health of our waterways you know everything that we do on land affects the water absolutely uh, runoff that comes from the parking lots and the roads or how our wastewater is treated whether the technology is up to speed to be able to do that the most effectively you know how we farm or how we fertilize our yards all of these decisions that we make as people or businesses or what have you have an impact on our water. So we're excited this year uh, in the series to have Cantares opening up the series on June 3rd, six o'clock Saturday night downtown on Harrison Street. Um, they are a Latin influence. Uh, I don't know if they're a duo or they're going to have They're going to be a quartet. There's a, it's going to be a four piece. I haven't heard the band before. Just check the YouTube clips and they look fantastic. But no, we, we have, we've had them in for school programs. And so she's bringing her larger group to make it, a, you know, not just for kids, but it'll still be the cool. flavors of Central and South America. Yeah. Well, you know, the town of Easton, as I understand it, is one of the municipalities around Maryland that has grown its Latino population by percentage much more than any other community. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. there are Latino folks that are here. The concert, the concert series is intended on June 3rd to you know, really try to have this be a safe and welcoming space for our entire bit. community to come and learn about the issues uh, related to clean water, learn about what you can do as a family, as a business, to make sure. decisions that affect water quality. And we really do hope uh, uh, everyone from Easton comes out and enjoys Absolutely. this series. Before, before we wrap, um, perhaps a bit of a political question, but, but one that's concerning me. We've heard coming, uh, I don't know what anybody's politics is, but we've heard coming out of the administration, and the new administration, uh, I was concerned that the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act have been questioned and uh, whatever. I, I hope that we as a community recognize that we have a responsibility irrespective of the uh, presidential edicts uh, to maintain the great work that has been done um, in terms of the, the health and the, and the, and the stability of the bay. I, I, won't, I won't get on my soapbox. <laughs> Here's how we look at it. You know, we, we have the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary on the planet, yeah. right here within the heart of the nation's capital. If we can't clean up this estuary here, how are we going to get it done? You know, there have been a lot of people that have been working hard at this for the last several decades, and that work is paying off now. Now is not the time to pull back and disinvest. Um, now is the time to continue to push forward. Um, Congressman Harris represents the first congressional district here uh, in Eastern Maryland. 
um, all of your viewers are represented by Congressman Harris, and so far he has committed to investing in the work that's needed to continue Good. the progress on the restoration. We need Good. to hold him to that promise. Yes. He is a member of the Appropriations Committee in Congress. He does have a pivotal, pivotal role in uh, the future of the Bay Restoration effort from a funding perspective and from a programmatic perspective. We really need to see folks come to the concert, learn about the issues, make sure they are aware and taking the steps at home, but also making sure the representatives on Capitol Hill are making the right decisions. Ab absolutely. Yeah. You know, again, from the clergy perspective, I can, I can do hours on this topic, but this is this not only is a fun reality, it's also a, a, an important reality. So mm -hmm. thank you, and Miss Susie, always thank you for, thank you for, for, having us. for doing this. Um, tell the dates again real quick. Sure. So we, we invite everyone in the community um, to come join us for the Clean Water Concert Series brought to you by the Avalon Foundation and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. They're all on Saturday nights. We kick off the season on June 3rd with Contere, which is music of South and Central America. Um, and then we'll go to June 24th with the U.S. Navy Band Sea Chanters. And then we wrap up the Clean Water Concert Series on July 8th with the XPDs. For more information, you can always visit avalonfoundation.org or give us a call, 410-822-7299, yeah. or stop any one of us on the streets yeah. and ask us, and we'll tell you, because <laughs> we want you there. Absolutely. Um, again, Alan, Susie, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we've been seated and talking with Susie Moore, who is the, the artistic director at the Avalon Theater, and Alan Gerard, who is the Eastern Shore director for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Appreciate your time, appreciate your good work, and uh, I hope everybody will come out on those nights and not only have a great time, but continue to protect and guard the sanctity and the sacredness of, of the Bay. Easton, we will see you next time at the Rabbi's Roundtable.